everybody, Norm over here, and I just got my new Music Connection magazine, and look who's on the cover. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know that you were on the cover. No, I just saw it on the desk. <laughs> well, kind of like his agent, you know. I, uh, you know, did you know you were on the cover of this? No, I, I you know, it's a, it's a flattering picture of me. Um, uh, it's the, which is very rare. Very good looking man. Which, which is rare, a good picture. This is why we use it over and over and over again. Because, you know, a broken watch is right twice a day. And then we, we, we ended up catch, catching a good angle. You know, <laughs> that, that profile pic. So. so tell me something. Better than this. Right? You, just, you just got off the road. And he is the busiest guy I know. Just over at Sunset Sound doing a record with your trio. With uh, Black Country mm -hmm. Communion, no, it's a, qu a quartet, Derek Sherini on keyboards, Jason Bonham on drums, um, uh, Glenn Hughes on bass and vocals, and, and, and uh, this guy on the cover. And uh, we're, this is our fifth and probably probably be the last record because we kind of work in uh, time frames that are just five and ten years. And we kind of all thought about, you know, just now would be a good time to do it. And, and well, maybe there'll be another one and maybe some more shows. but. Uh, it's really a good band, and I uh, saw the band on one of the cruises, and it was killer, uh, and, as always. And everybody really kind of uh, Glenn's could, vocals, too. yeah. And it's like hi, he could he so, could sing like a bird, and you know they, you know he finishes he finishes we all finish each other's sentences in the sense that they, you know, we complement each other musically, you know, and and there's there's very little uh, you know it's, it's like I come from more of a blues. Part Derek's more prog. Glenn is classic rock. Jason is a wonderful drummer, not just in the style of his father, but just in 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 general. I rank him one of the best drummers of all time. You know, and then he could play exact. You know, he knows every, all his father stuff too. It's just, but he has his own personality. So that's what we're doing. And I'm buying bar broadcasters here. So so. <laughs> well, this is a guitar. I mean, there's not a lot of guitars that kind of when I sell that I actually get a little tear in my eye and near weep, but this guitar um, I got from this guy, Al Hendrickson, who was a top studio player, played with so many people, uh, even played with Elvis uh, briefly, but right. Peggy Lee and Al Hurt and, uh, you know, on and on, right. Dizzy Gillespie and Barney Kessel even played yeah. with um, it, it, his resume is, I mean, you know what, what's, what's funny, it's like a lot of these um, uh, the session guys, you know, I mean, be it in Los Angeles, I mean, Leo Fender was just down the road. Right. Well, know? I'm sure that's what happened was Leo probably was introduced to Al or heard him play someplace mm -hmm. and gave him this guitar in the very beginning. Yeah. And I, I know that he had the guitar from since day one. And when he retired, he moved to Oregon, and he sold me the guitar. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it's the fact that it's still got the original case and uh, original it, strap, original strap, and, uh, and and the ashtrays around here somewhere. Yeah, you know, here it is, and it's got. I was saying, maybe you can enlighten me on this. Why did they do this? Where they put the solder? I, I don't know why they did it, and 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 why they stopped doing it because around '57. That it was gone. Yeah. Um, but you know that little drop of solder on the on the on these original backplate that 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 makes it a, a very expensive piece of kit. Right. Because if you lose that, that's hard to replace. That's right. But I, I never knew if there was an explanation for that. Maybe it's what? the ground. It's I don't know. Plating. The plating. Okay. So I I don't know why they they why those were particularly. Uh, the early ones had that, and then, then by the late 50s, they were gone. Um, it's it's a little bit of Fender folklore. This is a light one. Some of these are Which like 10, unusual, 11. That's right. You know, and same with the no casters. I've, I've had some no casters that were pretty good as well. Yeah, it's you know. So so here's a little thing for telly freaks. Um, there's four sounds in a in a guitar like this and you're like well there's only three switches well three-way switch sorry I have a sinus infection um, so classic dead tone I don't know anybody who uses it they're playing jazz with a vocal with a guy with yeah. brushes maybe or something and then if you put it in the middle it's the front pickup only Your, your 
your treble picker. But what you don't realize is this is the same damn switch they put in strats, the switchcraft. And if you're careful enough, you can wedge it and get both pickups. Now some of these had a blend circuit as well. Sounds pretty terrific, and I know Al would be proud to know that you're the owner now. And yeah, well, I it, kept it and took care of it. Now somebody can really play. I got, gonna own it. I got a few ancient things from you, you from that, that are, came out of those come out of those wooden boxes. Um, so the other thing is, uh, not to be long-winded, this is exactly the same guitar as a no-caster. It's basically the same thing, other than the fact that they, clip the they just clipped the, the, the decal. So if you have a no-caster, essentially you have a broadcaster, because a lot of them have this early finish, which kind of sunk in. Um, but by late 51, they, they were more of the traditional butterscotch. But by the same token, if you had a gold top Les Paul, and you had a sunburst Les Paul over the same year, uh, yeah, that uh, little difference makes a big difference in the value. value. The, yeah, I mean that little that little that little sticker that says broadcaster worth a lot of money. Worth a lot of most expensive sticker I know of. You know? There you go. Uh, but you know it's a piece of Fender history. Plus it's a 1950. It's not a 51. Yep. It's a 50, which is this is the this is the DNA and the the birth of uh, Fender guitars. Fender guitars, and and it's funny how you know. This something that was invented 73 years ago is still just practical. as practical and relevant today. So. And Joe, by the way, I just wanted to say this, is coming over to see the documentary, the documentary which Joe has uh, got a nice part in. That. Thank you so much for doing what you did. And I hope you really enjoy it. We're just getting to the point. It's been three years and people keep saying, what's going on with the documentary? It's like doing a record. Where once you start editing, you start going, should I leave this in? Should yeah. I take this out? And it's very difficult for somebody to say, that's it, you know. Exactly. So um, it, it, you got to, but you got to commit at some point. It's right. just like making a record. Somebody's got to come in and say, that's it. Uh, yeah, and, and that's you know, and, and a lot of times that's not you. You know, you, you got to have somebody like oh, this. This is this is it. This is getting too long, or blah blah. blah. Well, that's why I want to get your opinion on it too, because uh, we've held off before we started showing it to anybody because we want to be yeah pleased with what we got. Well, we did a documentary on Larry McRae that never came out for undisclosed reasons, but uh, that was the same process. It was like you know, I showed it to some film people. It's like no, this is getting long, so. Short, 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 short attention spans. Right, right. Instagrammable moments, you know. Well, I loved your documentary, by the way, too. That yeah, Paramount. Really good, too, Kevin so. did a good job. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I watched it one time, and I felt uncomfortable. And I said, well, if I feel uncomfortable watching it, then it's a good documentary because that's we, we documented that part Getting of my life. Getting close to home. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I got to go play guitar. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, he's got a new toy yeah. and. Uh, I'm sorry to see it go, if it's going any place, it's going down the street. Just going down the street. Don't ever take this guitar out of California. No. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, have a, I have a 00045 Martin from 41. It's never been out of the state of California. It went from Nazareth, Pennsylvania to, to, to uh, Orange County, and then it went from Orange County 80 years later to my house. Right, and we did the uh, two chains. The show the most expensive is we brought that out to show right. us, which is an amazing guitar, and, uh, and you brought Amos out too, yeah. which is also, by the way, in the documentary too. Nice, um, you know, and it was in my old store, and John Five was talking about guitars, and we flip open the case. He said, "Yeah, you know, there's a lot of major guitars, but there's major guitars." Right. And we flip this case open, and it's the Amos Flying V. Yep. So, Joe, you got some of my uh, prize I, I know, but it's just down the street. They can, they can well, always come back. It's in the family. Yeah. Joe Bonamassa, check him out.